and welcome to Prove It. This is Optiva's video series on probability. I'm Adrian. I traded options at Optiva for five years before joining our education team. And I can confidently tell you from my time on the trading floor that having a sound understanding of probability is a key ingredient for good decision making. So the goal of this video series is to provide you with this ingredient. I will aim to strengthen, challenge, and rewire your internal decision-making engines by exposing them to some neat probability problems. Let's kick off. You and your friend are going to meet up after work. You both work in the city in different buildings, and the plan is for one of you to walk over to the other person's office. Unfortunately, it was not made clear who will be walking over to who. And so in this case, you both clock off at the same time and start walking towards the other person's building. Oh dear, how likely is it that you and your friend will run into each other along the way? The answer to this question clearly depends on a few things. And right now, the setup is a little bit vague. So let's mathematize it and focus on a particular simple instance. Imagine that you and your friend are starting at opposite corners of a 4x4 grid. You are at the bottom left and your friend is at the top right. Every second, you will randomly, according to a coin flip, move either right one space or up one space. Also, if you or your friend run into the edge of the grid, then you can only proceed in the remaining available direction. Here's an example of the paths that you and your friend might take as you both stroll towards the other person's office. Note that in this example, you and your friend do not meet. Your paths intersect, but at different points in time. For our problem, we want to work out the probability that you and your friend do meet. At this point, have a quick think and pause the video if you need to. What are the possible points on this grid where you and your friend can meet? There are in fact only five possible meeting points. These are the points along this diagonal. Let's label them. A, B, C, D, and E. Now, before we unleash the maths, try and answer me this first. What do you think is more likely? That you and your friend run into each other or that you miss each other? Try to answer the question without lifting a pen, but instead using some softer but still accurate reasoning. Pause the video and have a try. I'll wait here. Here's how I would start to think about this. Look at meeting point A it is quite unlikely that you will meet there. You would need to flip four heads in a row, and your friend would need to flip four tails. By the same reasoning, meeting point E is also a write-off in terms of likelihood. So it should be clear that B, C, and D are the more likely meeting places. Given that there are three plausible places you could both be halfway through the walk, perhaps there's roughly a one-third chance that your friend arrives at the same place. Hmm. With a good amount of hand-waving, my ballpark probability for this problem is one-third. I think it's more likely that you miss each other. However, let's prove it by finding the probability exactly. Specifically, we want the probability that after four steps, your friend is at the same point as you. We'll forget your power for a moment. Let's start with your journey. For each of the possible meeting points, what is the probability that you will end up there? Working out these probabilities is quite doable. The only way to get to point A is with the sequence of coin flips, heads, 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 heads. There is a one half to the power of four, or one in 16 chance that this happens. We can quickly argue by symmetry that the probability of getting to E is the same as getting to A. This is because here you need the complementary sequence, tails, 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 tails. So, moving on, what is the probability that we get to point B? In this case, the possible coin flip sequences are heads, 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 tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, and tails, heads, heads, heads. You just need three steps up and one step right, in any order. There are four of these, each with a 1 on 16 chance of happening. Therefore, there is a 4 16th probability that you get to be. And again, thank you symmetry, the same probability must hold for D. Finally, we need to work out the probability of getting to C. I guess we could write down all possible coin sequences, but do you see a quicker way? It's just going to be the leftover. 
the probabilities for each of the five meeting points must sum to one. And thus, a bit of arithmetic gets us that the probability of arriving at C is 6 on 16. Now let's continue and work out the probability that you and your friend meet up. We will start with point A. This is actually really easy due to the fact that we know the probability that you will get to A is 1 on 16. Likewise, the probability that your friend will get to A is also 1 on 16. As your paths are independent, the probability that you will meet at A is 1 on 16 times 1 on 16, which is 1 on 256. Now that you've seen how to calculate the probability of meeting at A, can you do the rest for me and write down an expression for the overall probability of meeting? We have to repeat what we've just done for A for each possible meeting point and then add them all together. So all we really have to do is square each probability and then sum. I'll save you the busy work. This is equal to 70 over 256, which is a probability of about 27%. That is not too far from our original estimate of one third. So indeed, it is quite unlikely that you will run into your friend in this example. For now, here's a follow-up question. What happens on an n by n grid? We can draw a lot of inspiration from the structure of the solution for the 4 by 4 problem. If we look at the fractions that we are squaring, the denominators come from the fact that we are flipping four coins to get to the halfway point, and there are 2 to the power of 4 or 16 possible outcomes from doing this. The numerators count the number of possible paths to each of those points. For example, to get to C, we need to count the number of ways we can get two heads and two tails. Mathematically, this is 4 choose 2, which is equal to 6. The above sum can thus be written in a more compact way. At this point, you can probably see how to generalize this formula to other values of n. Pause the video and try to write down the general expression for the probability of meeting on an n by n grid, where n is of course an even number. The answer is 1 on 2 to the power of 2n, multiplied by the summation of n choose i squared as i ranges from 0 to n. What do you think happens for large n? How likely is it that you and your friend meet? Probably not likely at all, right? Imagine you and your friend walking from opposite corners of a place like Manhattan. There are many more halfway points, and so many more opportunities to avoid each other. Now it's your turn to prove it. Have a go at showing that as n tends to infinity, the probability of meeting tends to zero. There are actually a few ways to do this. See if you can find a nice, quick, elementary method. And then a natural follow-up question also arises. How quickly does the probability approach zero as n gets large? Actually, on that note, and this is simpler than the last exercise, try and prove that for an n by n grid, where n is an even number, that the probability of meeting is at least 1 on n. So even on a 100 by 100 grid, you and your friend will still have at least a 1% chance of meeting. Not all hope is lost. And as a hint, you can use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality for this one. OK, have some fun with those exercises and share your answers and thoughts. I'll see you in the next video.